CBC News has spoken to multiple sources who accuse Governor General Julie Payette of creating a culture of fear inside Rideau Hall. This includes allegations of yelling, belittling and publicly humiliating employees. The CBC's Ashley Burke uncovered those claims. She joins us now. Hey, Ashley, good to see you. Tell us more about what you learned. Vashi, multiple sources describe behavior that you would not expect from a governor general um, to the point where people have been brought to tears. You know, I spoke to about a dozen sources. Um, they, some are government, some are government workers, um, some are former employees. We gave them, con uh, to, we told them they could be anonymous um, because of the fact that they could lose their jobs or they could, their dam they could uh, damage their reputation moving forward, their careers. Um, and they painted really a picture that they described as, as quite troubling. Um, as you mentioned, humiliating staff, belittling them, um, putting down employees. And it's not just one sort of, you know, troubling thing that happened on one day. This is a constant uh, behavior that happened over a period of time. And it just picked away at people's self-worth. Sources said that they had so much anxiety that they couldn't walk into the building in the morning and that they had to leave the office just to, to help their mental health, their physical health. Um, one, one source described going into meetings being like an interrogation. So your work was picked apart in front of your colleagues at great length. Uh, they felt incompetent um, and it just was publicly humiliating to be put down like that. that that's one of the examples we, we received from many sources. Um, what you're about to hear is a clip from two people. One is a longtime government worker and another is a former employee who left. Uh, we've changed their voices in order to protect their, their identities. It's not just that you can occasionally be wrong and be called out for that. It's a regular barrage that when the secretary or the governor general do not agree with you, there's this tag team approach to going after you. And not just one-on-one, -on -one, but in front of other people, as if to lessen your role or the authority you have within the scope of your job or what you're supposed to be doing at Rideau Hall. It's almost hard to pinpoint because it's not, it wasn't always insult and vulgar, but there was always that level of criticism. There was, I'll go as far to say, a victim at every meeting. Now, sources claim that it's also travel that brought out the worst in Payette. Some likened her and used the exact term that she acted like a toddler being dragged around that didn't want to go places, uh, complained of being underfed, underfed, overworked, and tired, and that on the trips home, when they fly back on the plane, they would do a huddle. So that's something they did other during past mandates. Usually it was a time to celebrate the work they did. She'll have people huddle around her and then spend that time on the plane, you know, really picking apart people's work, um, insulting them, and, and laying out the the many ways that they have failed her and people uh, sources described would get off the plane and they would go to their cars and on the way back and they would just cry uh, because it just was so difficult to hear after trying to you know work so hard for her throughout the trip and, and that's an example that we heard uh, from many sources a lot of the more specific ones could be linked directly back to the people we spoke to I know that you reached out to both the Governor General and the Prime Minister's office for a reaction to this, for comment on this. Just quickly, though, I want to ask, was there a turn, like, what's the turnover like there? What does that tell you? Yeah, and I guess I should note first as well, it's not just it's not just the governor general that's responsible for this. You know, multiple sources says that it's also the secretary, Asunta De Lorenzo. She is Payette's longtime friend uh, who was hired on this. Essentially, it's the deputy role in the office. Um, and she's also accused of belittling employees, of humiliating them, saying things to them like that they are lazy or incompetent, and really just talking down to people. And people describe sort of a tag team approach that went on of the two of them treating employees like this together. Um, and there was really created a sense of fear where people People were just afraid to be at work, that they were going to be in trouble for something. In one case, um, it's been described to me by a source, by several sources, that um, Madame Payette actually threw people's works and said, this is shit. Like, it got to that point where people felt just publicly humiliated about what was going on. And this did lead to a lot of people um, leaving. We've, we've experienced a wave right now where during the pandemic alone, there have been four people in the communications department that have left. This is a small department, including two other people, another two other people have gone on leave and a fifth person is leaving this week. And that's the second sort of wave like that we've seen after Madame Payette's first year at Rideau Hall. There was also uh, five executives who left in a, just a couple months Ban. Now, her herself has rotated a number through a number of executive assistants, and so has the, the uh, so is De Lorenzo. She's had you know a four in just a two-year period. That, that's not what you normally see. These are people that normally work there for a lifetime throughout their entire career. These are not jobs that you just walk away from. Uh, but people said that you know they just 
you know, there, there was no recourse for them. And they just didn't see, feel like there was any way um, for them, like for anyone to step in and do something. And they didn't know how much worse it could keep getting. So like I said, you brought these accusations to the governor general, her office, her spokespeople. What did you get in response? And, and from the prime minister's office as well? Yeah, well, in the statement, the prime minister's officer, officer said that, Prime Minister's office said that everyone has a right to a healthy workplace and referred our specific questions about the allegations to Rideau Hall. Now, when we went to Rideau Hall, um, this, the press secretary for the Governor General responded and said that she deeply regrets this reporting that we're doing and said, quote, that it's in stark contrast to the reality of working at Rideau Hall. And she said it obscures the important work done by their staff that are representing Canadians. Now, the press secretary also really defended the process they have in place, this HR, the HR process, the ombudsman. Um, process that they have. And she added that they take these matters really seriously and that no, no formal harassment complaint has been issued. But sources I spoke to said the problem is that they haven't filed official complaints or harassment complaints because they just go to the De Lorenzo, who's part of allegedly part of the problem, and Payette. Uh, they feel it's a closed loop system. There is an, an um, ombudsman they can go to with Public Service of Current Canada, but that person doesn't have the power to investigate or register complaints. It's, they really just create a safe space in order for people to, you know, share share their their feelings and work on their own careers. Um, however, in, you know, if there's a sort of a systemic problem issue, they can go to De Lorenzo, but again, as I mentioned, it's part of the problem. So. People just said there is no recourse here and it doesn't seem like something will be happening. Well, my guess is there'll be a lot of reaction to this and I'm sure you'll bring it to us when there is. Thanks so much, Ashley. Welcome back to Power in Politics. I'm here with the Power panel. I want to turn back to that exclusive story we had earlier in the show from my colleague Ashley Burke. Multiple sources have come forward to CBC News to call out what they say is a toxic environment inside Rideau Hall created by Governor General Julie Payette. Several claims of employees being berated and reduced to tears and that workplace harassment has led to high st staff rather turnover. So what can be done about it? Should there be anything done about it? The power panel is here to weigh in. Supriya, Shakir and Francoise. Uh, Shakir, I'll start with you. What was your initial impression reading Ashley's story? Uh, to be quite honest, it's, it's it's breaking news, but I think we've kind of heard this narrative before of the Governor General. I remember uh, during her first year, there were numerous articles talking about um, her not really appreciating or respecting the tradition and protocols in the office, um, not really sure what she was getting herself into as far as assuming the role of the Governor General. And I think she had an end-of-year uh, kind of uh, um, uh, speech or whatever on TV. And she said one of the things she wanted to improve on was communicating better. So I think uh, we're seeing through this article that she hasn't really done a good job of, of being a better communicator. And I mean, nobody wants to see staff or any employee in an unhealthy work environment, but I mean, that's what we have here. But again, uh, given what I've read as far as her first year uh, as the governor general, I wasn't extremely shocked, but it obviously it's disturbing reporting uh, given the way staff were being treated in that office. Francoise, what did you think? Uh, as a labor lawyer, it always uh, hurt me to read this or hear about this in 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 the media because it gets it goes against all my fibers. I mean, as a, an employer, a lawyer, we're, we're, we train the people not to discuss these uh, matters uh, publicly. But sometimes, uh, sadly, though, uh, there's employees who just feel that nobody is listening and they have to take uh, those uh, those steps. Um, I, I I cannot discuss the content because I have absolutely absolutely no way to, to verify if what is said is true. Uh, I read the comment uh, or the, the press release from the governor general uh, office saying that uh, uh, in the last years they've never had any official complaint through the uh, uh, actual uh, uh, way that can be done. But talking about unionized uh, employees that could file a grievance uh, and, and, and things like that. So it's hard to know. I heard, like Shaquille, that it was maybe not easy the first uh, first few years. But uh, she's a strong woman, not to 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 uh, justify anything if any of uh, the things mentioned are, are are true. I kind of thought that the, her last six months she was growing into the job. I thought she was much better, more people. Um, I saw her during the eleventh uh, of November. Um, uh, Events and I, I thought she was very. She sounded you. She looked human and uh, and very people a person. But you never know. So and it's not only her. It seems there's also her secretary. Um, 
We'll see. Uh, we see that the PM don't uh, uh, office doesn't want to touch this because they they turn it back to the GG. Yeah. I'm sure they have enough uh, with the we, and they don't want to go into the GG either. Yeah, they basically referenced the statement from the Governor General that that you talked about, Francoise. And, and before I head to Supri, I'll just read a, a, a little section of it, of it. We deeply regret this reporting. The spokesperson says, which is in stark contrast to the reality of working at the OSGG and obscures the office and obscures the important work done by our dedicated staff in honoring, representing, and showcasing Canadians. We take these matters very seriously. We're proud of our stringent internal process for our employees to voice concerns through the staffing of a robust and accessible human resources department and independent ombudsman, in addition to maintaining excellent relationships with the unions that represent our employees whom have additional processes for the protection and support of federal public servants. I note just quickly that uh, Ashley did, of course, ask the people. She spoke to a dozen people uh, who have worked Work there or work uh, for the Governor General about that ombudsman in particular and why they haven't gone that route. And she conveyed to us in her reporting that they uh, they feel like they, or I guess the ombudsman does not have the power to register complaints or la- launch investigations. So they felt it would go straight back to kind of the source. And so they were worried about the, the potential lack of effectiveness of, of all of that. Uh, Supriya, your impression uh, of the uh, reporting? Yeah, I mean, Shakir's right. There had been quite a few, you know, rumblings and quite a bit of uh, reporting, I think, from National Post in particular about how she wasn't super into the job to begin with. I would just, you know, if you're that unhappy, and I think everyone's been in a job that they really genuinely hate, right? Where like anything (laughs) past 3 p.m. on a Sunday, all you could think about is how terrible Monday morning is going to be. But in that case, like, just go. Like, nobody's forcing you to be the governor general right now. If you really hate it that much, and it's to the point where, you know, a lot of these allegations um, turn out to to, to be true, and, and, you know, you're bullying your staff um, to the point where it's almost like cartoon villainy in nature, you know, quizzing them on the solar system and stuff, it's uh, it's it is a, a little bit odd. I, I think if there's one silver lining out of this, maybe from this reporting we can finally get some better accountability here, um, so that employees do have a direct line. Um, to report on their higher ups without it necessarily going back directly to the higher up that's causing the issue. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. Thanks Thank to you. our power panel this evening, Thank Supriya Devetti, Shakir Chambers, as well as Francoise Boivin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.